Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan for Pretty Pink Posh, and in today's video, I'm going to be creating texture using some mica sprays. The Distress Mica Sprays are a seasonal product. I happen to have both collections, the one from last year and the one from this year. And to do all of this, I am going to use the Winter Foliage Set from Pretty Pink Posh. I'm starting out with a slick surface, and I have a piece of watercolor cardstock from Ranger cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now with the mica sprays, you wanna make sure you shake them up really, really well before you spray them. So I did that and I sprayed it down onto my slick surface and I took my cardstock and I'm dabbing it and tapping it into that spray that is on the mat. So now I have this gorgeous red background, but I wanna add some more texture to this. So without cleaning anything up, I dried my panel and now I'm dabbing this back into that mixture. Now this is one of the reasons why I am using this white slick surface is because the mica sprays or any ink really beads up on it and it creates this fabulous texture on the background. I took some water into my fingertips and I'm flicking it onto the background and then I'm gonna pick it up with a paper towel. Now that it's not as noticeable on the red, even though you'll see a lot of red picked up, it's not quite as noticeable, but there is some kind of more texture in there because it's picking up that ink. So now when I tilt this, look at all the shimmer that that mica spray contains. It is so gorgeous in person. I'm putting that panel off on the side to dry for a little bit, and I'm gonna repeat those same steps, and I think this is fresh balsam. Now you can really do this with any type of ink you have. You could do ink smushing, you could do it with any other type of sprays that you have, the reason I chose mica sprays is because it has all of that shine in there. It has that mica in there, which is why I wanted it. I wanted my foliage to have some shimmer to it. Now before with the red, I had sprayed down the mica. I had added some water to it. This one, I just used the mica spray and then kind of smushed my paper down into it. So you can see it didn't really spread out as well, which is fine. I'm going to dry that with my heat tool and spray some more down and dip that back in. So I'm gonna try and cover all of the corners of my cardstock and just keep dipping it to create that texture. Now, after I kind of set these off on the side and let them dry for a while, I'm gonna take my red panel and I am going to die cut out these poinsettia dies and I'm just gonna line them up. I'm gonna try and cut out as many as I can. I only use one set but I'm gonna try and get as much as I can and then save the other ones for another project. So I have a large and a small one so that I can layer them up. Now also on that winter foliage set is a bunch of foliage. Some of them are pretty intricate. So I'm gonna show you a trick. I took the green panel and I'm placing everything down, holding it down with a tape. And now I have my sandwich is going to be the same except I flipped it. So my top plate is really on the bottom. I have my paper so that the die's cutting side is facing up, and then the plate that I usually cut into is on the top. This is a really good trick to do if you have intricate dies to die cut out. For some reason, it just cuts it a lot better, especially this one on the far left of my cardstock there. It has all of those fine pieces, and I'm able to just kind of run my finger over that and pop it out. Now, I also die cut these pieces out of some gold mirror cardstock and white cardstock as well. I'm gonna move on to creating a background. And here I have just a light blue cardstock and I'm going to use the layered snowflakes stencil. So I'm taping my cardstock down to my work surface so it doesn't move around. And then I'm going to place one of the stencils on the top and just hold that down with that low tack tape once again. I'm going to come in with some turquoise C ink and a blending brush and I'm gonna pick up that brush or pick up that ink with my brush and just gently go over these snowflakes. I wanna make sure I'm going in both directions to cover the entire area of the stencil. Then I'm going to carefully remove the stencil and you'll be able to see the first layer of these snowflakes. Now you could also leave it just like this too, but I decided to go the full way with all three of the layering stencils. So once again, I have that second layer now attached with that low tack tape, going over it with the same color ink this would be really fun if you wanted to do various shades of blue, but I really didn't want to get too distracting in the background. Now, this is the third layer, so it's applying some smaller snowflakes. But like I said, I didn't want the background to be too distracting, so that's why I'm keeping it all one color on this light blue cardstock. 
Now I'm starting off my arrangement by adding a small foam square to the middle of the smallest poinsettia and I'm going to place that on top of the large one. So I'm going to layer these up just with that one piece of adhesive to add some dimension and kind of having it uh, fill in the gaps between the leaves. I kind of arranged them just to see and start getting an idea of how I wanted the card to look. But before I decided to attach anything, I want to add some kind of white speckles to my background. I love adding flicks of white. It's just something that I don't know. It's just something nice that's a little extra to add to the background. So I have this Copic white ink that I'm picking up with my paintbrush and I'm going to put it into some water and then just flick this all over the background. I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes and then I'm going to work on the actual arrangement. Now this I played with a lot off screen. It took me a while. It was probably the longest part of putting this card together. And here you can see where I had die cut the foliage also from some gold mirror cardstock and white cardstock. So I have things kind of tucked under right now. You can see my card base or my card panel was trimmed down to four by five and a quarter and added to a white card front. And I also had popped up that poinsettia with another foam square to the card front. And I'm just tucking everything in. I'm trying to keep it balanced where I have gold kind of on the top, the bottom, and a little bit on the side. And I do that with the white and the green, just trying to keep all of those colors balanced. Some of the pieces I did need to trim off a portion with my scissors just so it doesn't stick out too far. And because I only used a foam square to attach that whole poinsettia to the front of the card, I have some room to be able to tuck everything in. Now, as far as glue, I'm just using my Barely Arts liquid glue, but any type of liquid glue would work here. And it really did help to have my tweezers so I can kind of pop those into those tight places. Now, after I get everything arranged, I felt like it was just kind of missing something. So just for kicks, I brought that Copic white back in with a little bit of water. And I'm flicking this onto the flower and those leaves. And I really love how that came out. That was just that little bit extra and kind of that almost vintagey, rustic feel that I was looking for. Now, in the meantime, I was really struggling with having so much open space at the top. So I'm completely tearing my card apart. This was just attached with a tape runner. So it was very easy for me to pull that off. And I'm going to take a piece of cardstock that's cut to the same size and attach it to the back just so I don't have all of that stickiness when I go to try and trim this down because I really did want to trim it down. I struggle with having so much open space uh, when I want to do a sentiment. So once I attach that backing, then I took it over to my paper trimmer and I start off by trimming just a quarter of an inch off of um, my long side and my short side. Sorry, lost my words there for a second. I always start with just a quarter of an inch and then I kind of decide if I want to go a little smaller, then I can. I'd rather just do it little by little than taking too much off and not being happy with the size. So now I am happy with the size. It was enough where I had just enough space at the top to add a sentiment, but yet still left area to show the snowflake background. So I can then go ahead and add tape runner to the back and attach this to a white card front that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Now for my sentiment, I am using the holiday scripts. So I have a piece of, I think this is Tranquil Teal from Gina K Designs. I'm prepping that with an anti-static powder tool, inking this up with a white pigment ink, and then just gently stamping that down. I don't want to push too hard because these are kind of a delicate uh, font. So I don't want to squish the letters and distort it. So I stamped it one more time, and then I'm sprinkling on white embossing powder, tapping off the excess, and then I can bring in my heat tool once it's nice and hot and melt that embossing powder. I'll then use the coordinating die to die cut this out. And I'm also going to cut out about three more pieces using that coordinating die. So I'm really happy with how that cardstock looks on the front of the card. But there is a smaller sentiment I wanted to add. So I am going to stamp this in some VersaFine black ink just right on to the background. Just tapping down gently to stamp that down. So this is going to say happy holidays. Now I'm taking those extra pieces I die cut out, adding some liquid glue to the back and layering these up to create just that little bit of dimension to the front of the card. And then I can go ahead and add it to the card front. Now I ran out of time while filming this, but after uh, everything was done, I did off screen add some gold pearls to the center of my flower, just using some liquid glue. 
that finishes up my card project for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and technique and definitely give this a try. It is so pretty. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon.